stars are so far away, all we see is a pinpoint of light. The biggest telescope, looking at the closest star, all you see is a dot. To measure the distance to something you cannot touch, you have to use trigonometry. You have to know two angles and a side, or two sides and an angle. Earth is 8,000 miles in diameter, which is basically zero compared to star distance. So what they've done to enlarge the triangle is they look at the star in January and look at it in June, and now you have a 93 million mile radius on a circle, which is eight light minutes. So a 16 light minute diameter. A year has 525,000 minutes in it. So if you had two surveyors 16 inches apart, looking at a dot eight and a third miles away, that's the ratio you have using Earth's orbit as the base, looking at one light year. Uh, that makes an angle of 0 0.017 degrees. To measure 100 light years is clearly impossible. That's like two people in, Chica in uh, Pensacola on my roof, 16 inches apart, looking at a dot in Chicago. 15 billion years is clearly impossible. To, we just simply can't measure those distances. I don't, stars probably are billions of light years away. I don't know. Nobody does. Um, this textbook says you can measure 100 light years. Well, I doubt it, but I'll give them 100. So we don't know the distance to the stars. They could be billions of light years. We also have proven pretty cl conclusively here in the last 20 years that the speed of light is not a constant. At Harvard University in 99, they slowed light down to 38 miles an hour. The next year, they slowed it down to one mile an hour. The next year, they brought it to a dead stop. This was done at Harvard, Smithsonian, and Cambridge. That's what science is, something repeatable, observable, not hypothetical. At Princeton, meanwhile, they speeded light up to 300 times the speed of light. The speed of light has decreased so rapidly over time that experimental error cannot explain it. Astronomer Barry Setterfield from Australia said, here's the chart showing the decline in the speed of light. If we had time, we'd talk about all that. The speed of light was apparently exceeded by a factor of as much as 100. Everything's documented at the bottom of the screen and on my website. The speed of light was 10 billion times faster at time zero. According to the Big Bang Theory, the speed of light had to be faster. The speed of light may have changed over history, study says. A shocking possibility is the speed of light might, have, might change in time during the life of the universe. Now, 2002, August, at, uh, 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 Sydney, Australia, said the speed of, the light, speed of light may not be a constant. The speed, of, speed limit of the cosmos is being questioned. There's a new book out called Faster Than the Speed of Light. So thirdly, I think that God created, made, made a mature creation. Adam and Eve were full grown. The trees were full grown. It has to be that way. You don't want to make two babies and put them in the Garden of Eden and give them a package of seeds and say, here, plant these quick. Um, it had to be mature. A light year is a distance. It's not a time. So if a star is 10 billion light years away, that's a distance. That's not a time. It's 10 billion light years. That's a distance. I don't know how they missed that. The speed of light is not proven to be consistent. So why would star distance have anything to do with the age of the universe? God could have made it you know, yesterday if he wanted. I think he made it 6,000 years ago. Everything mature, fully formed, fully functioning. That's my answer. And how'd they say that on America? Uh, on, uh... That's my final answer. There you go. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, there is no doubt that the speed of light may have changed uh, over cosmological time. And it would be very difficult for us uh, with our present understanding, as I understand it, and I'm strictly an outsider on physics and cosmology, to prove or disprove uh, whether the speed of light has changed uh, over long, long periods of time. That it has been increased, the speed in Princeton, is an outright fabrication. You can go to this person and get him to give you the references and you can chase him down and see if anybody else in this state or anywhere else that has actual knowledge of the scientific work believes that someone has speeded up the speed of light by what was it, a factor of 300 you said? I'll show you the reference. Uh, let's yeah. see. 300 I think you said. Uh, this will be That's here. what the article said. Let's see. All right. Well, anyway. Here, New York Times, uh, May 30th, year 2000. So take it up with Mayor, what's his name from New York? Okay. <coughs> <laughs> this is the article just as it appeared on June 4th of the year 2000. Okay, well, uh, I suggest Dr. Go, Lee Jong Wang. Yeah, find a, find a scientific journal and see if the conclusion is as described in there. Um, you know, I had one thought before I came over here, and this is the end of the question period, so this will be my last thought. I figured this man probably uses a computer. He probably uses light bulbs. He probably watches a television. He probably makes use of the enormous technological innovations that have come from the scrupulous, careful, 
detailed, and now centuries-long application of scientific reasoning to the universe around us. If you followed his style of approach broadly, not just we want to teach our children uh, this and that, but took his style of approach towards reality, his uh, uh, assertions about the veracity of, of the work of other people and so on, you wouldn't come up with a calculator. You wouldn't come up with a ruler. You wouldn't come up with nothing like the computer that he's blessed to be able to use. Thank you. Dr. Trevor's had an opportunity for some closing comments. Dr. Hoven, some closing comments, please. Um, I certainly enjoy science. I have nothing against science. But the idea that uh, we wouldn't have computers if it weren't for evolution is simply ludicrous. Evolution has computers. <laughs> Don't, don't, use up my, don't use up my time here. Nearly all of the branches of science were started by creationists. It's the evolutionists that came along and like a leech began to suck the blood out of a valuable science over the last 20 years. Uh, nearly all branches of science were started by creationists, not by evolutionists. I defy you to find me one scientific advancement because of the theory of evolution. Uh, the evolution theory is useless. It's not only useless, it's dangerous. We teach the kids they're an animal and then wonder, why do they act like an animal? Well, duh. They, all these are names of scientists who were believers in creation. So don't tell me that we wouldn't have a computer if it hadn't been for evolution. The guy who invented, like Maxwell, for instance, or uh, uh, Lord uh, Kelvin, and all these guys, all these guys are, were the shoulders that the giants were standing on, or the, the people were standing on the shoulders of giants. These are the giants they were standing on to create a computer. Somebody had to develop the transistor and had to develop the circuitry and printed circuitry. And these guys were creationists. These guys were believers in the Bible. They thought God created the world, and it's, it's man's duty to try to see how God did it and why he did it. Uh, I love science, and it is, it's a useless theory. It doesn't help us get a computer or go to the moon. There's no value to it whatsoever. And I resent the implication that scientists, all scientists believe in evolution, because they don't. The guy who invented the MRI is a creationist like me. There are thousands of scientists who are creationists. Many are indeed afraid of losing their job, because there's a real prejudice against those who don't believe, who don't bow down to the sacred cow. I mean, I'm sorry, here, let me find the right one here. I'll give you some examples here very quickly, since these are closing comments here, uh, uh, about uh, some scientists who were wrong in the past. Uh, here, lots of examples of that. Um, Dr. Robert Gentry did incredible research on the disposal of radioactive wastes at uh, Oak Ridge Laboratories in Knoxville, Tennessee. He was one of the world's experts on granites. He published in all the major magazines saying, look, the granites have these little tiny halos in them, radio polonium halos, indicating this rock was never hot. It forms too quickly. You can get his book or his website, uh, halos.com, if you want to get more on that. Roger DeHart was a science teacher in high school in Washington. He was told he could not tell his students about errors in the textbooks by passing out current science journals. You can't tell the kids there's a lie in your textbook. Kevin Haley, biology teacher, Central Oregon Community College, lost his job for simply exposing errors in the textbooks because that's a threat to the evolutionist. Baylor University fired William Dembski because he advocated there might be an intelligent designer that caused all this. Forrest Mims was a science writer for many years for many magazines. He was denied a job at Scientific American simply because he was a creationist. Rod Levesque in Minnesota uh, was reassigned just because he expressed doubt in Darwin's theory. Ta uh,